Hey, what is up everyone? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're gonna tell you why you should not buy a gaming laptop. Let's get right into it, shall we? Do you need help with YouTube? Are you ready to take the next step and make your channel bigger? All right, well listen up. I got just a thing for you. It's called TubeBuddy. It's an extension tailored for YouTube and it offers all kinds of tools. One of my favorite is the Tag Suggester, and another one of my favorite is the Best Time to Upload feature. But that's only to name a few, so go check it out for yourself in the link down below. So the main concept of this video is the idea, well, more of an argument, of buying a gaming laptop. Now, all the stuff that you're going to see here costs us around $530, and the concept we're trying to prove is you don't need to spend $500 on a mid-tier gaming laptop. You can get both. You can get a gaming desktop and a laptop for schoolwork and just Netflix or whatever else you want to do. Not really intense gaming. But for the same price as getting one gaming laptop, you can get the best of both worlds. And today we're going to show you an alternative that you can do today if you went on Amazon and Newegg or eBay, whatever resource available to you, and you can make it happen. So first we're going to start off with the laptop that we have here. So this is a Lenovo T440. It's actually a really famous laptop. A lot of people like these. They like to upgrade them because this does come with the core i5-4300U. You can upgrade things like RAM. You can put an SSD in it, which we are going to do. Because as you can see, this one here came with no hard drive. So it has a two and a half inch drive, nice and open. So we bought a really decent size and cheap SSD to throw into it. So as the sticker implies, we paid $105 for it on eBay, and this is a really typical price. I actually looked up a bunch of sold listings, I looked up a bunch that were being sold. You can find these things all day and night, they're all over eBay and other used websites, and they're all around the $100 to $130 range depending on what type of accessories you get with them. So of our $500 and really $50 budget that we are going for here, the laptop only takes up about 136 of it, and then the computer part that we'll get to in just a second only actually takes up $400 of it, which is really great because this laptop, it's not really gonna be able to do gaming, but I'm sure it could do some light stuff like Minecraft, Bed Wars, and um, stuff that we don't play here at the Toaster Bros. Never. And the actual computer itself is gonna have a really good upgrade path because, you know, Ryzen and actually decent graphics card to start off with. So it's actually a pretty future-proof build, and you also have portability to be able to do the stuff you need to do on the go without having to spend $500 you know, to $800 on a laptop that's literally gonna perform like the desktop will. All right, so now let's talk about this PC build. We've actually done a very similar PC build very recently on the channel. I'll leave that in the eye in the top right corner to check that out. But the main focus is, of course, a Ryzen processor, specifically the Ryzen 3 2200G. Four core processor with integrated graphics, but we will not be using those integrated graphics because we have a nice graphics card right here, which I'll talk about in just a second. This is more than enough power for an entry level gaming PC. A lot of games just still only take advantage of four cores, and this quad core Ryzen 3, along with the ability to have a really good upgrade path because it is on the Ryzen platform, is a great starting point to get good 1080p gaming performance. Oh. Yeah, almost caught it with my foot. Now, speaking of that upgrade path, we have an ASRock B450M-HDV motherboard. It is one of the best budget options out there. It gives you that upgrade path through something like a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 in the future and comes with a very neutral color scheme, not some of those ugly motherboards out there that are brown or have like a lot of accent colors. This is going to look really good in our PC build. Now for RAM, of course you have to go with dual channel memory with Ryzen or you're gonna be unhappy. This right here is 2400 megahertz Ripjaws series memory from G-Skill. Um, you can overclock the memory to 3000 megahertz, but again, we're on a really tight budget. If you wanted to stretch your budget a little bit more and get 3000 megahertz memory, more power to you. but this stuff is gonna be more than enough considering we're gonna be using this graphics card over here, which we'll talk about in just a second again, um, and we'll be using a lot of performance from that. We're using an RX 580, ladies and gentlemen. The main reason we're going with the RX 580, again, is because, well, it's a great graphics card on a budget, and there's not really any other graphics cards that pack as much power as this one does for how cheap you can get it. This is an RX 580 from MSI. It looks really nice. I actually got this on eBay for around $100, is that what it is? Um, the twin frozen coolers are really nice. This is one of my favorite RX 580 cards because it looks really nice. And the seller actually did a really good job making this look brand new. So this is gonna be perfect for 1080p high settings on pretty much any game you wanna play. And paired with this uh, Ryzen 3 2200G, it's honestly a really good combo from our other testing. 
Now to knock off the rest of the stuff in this build, we have a boot drive. This is a 120 gigabyte M.2 SSD, a WD green, good enough for Windows in a few games. If you do wanna add more storage, you can always pay a little bit more to get a hard drive on eBay for like 20 or 30 bucks, a 500 gigabyte, one terabyte hard drive. That is something I would recommend if you do have a big game library. And as for the power supply, of course, an EVGA 450 watt BT power supply. This does come with the nice cables inside compared to some of the other cheaper EVGA units. And it's gonna look really nice inside this DIY PC case. Yes, you heard it right. We are back doing another DIY PC build. This is the JAX 11-W, which has a white and black color scheme to it. Kind of a stormtrooper look. It's actually really cool looking. Um, and of course, DIY PC makes some really awesome budget hardware. And overall, it's gonna make for a really awesome budget build to pair with this laptop because who should buy a gaming laptop in 2019 when you can have both? So let's get right into upgrading this thing and then also building this PC. So in the description box down below, you guys will see we have a 240 gig SSD picked up. We paid $30 for it. We did get it, except there was kind of some confusion on whose house it went to. And we don't have it here for this specific video, so we're just gonna put a 120 gig in its place. But just pretend this is a 240 gig. You guys don't even see it. It's actually a 240 gig. Okay, so a little bit of an update. After putting the system together, we had some RAM issues, and actually the RAM wasn't the problem. It actually seems to be a compatibility issue with the specific RAM that we are using. So we'll be leaving updated links in the description down below to RAM that's similarly priced, but should work. Um, we're actually using some Ballistics Elite memory from uh, Crucial, which Crucial was nice enough to send over for another build, but actually they're getting a pretty quick plug because it's gonna be used in this build. This is some fast 3000 megahertz memory, eight gigs, it's the exact same stuff, just a little bit faster. So if you do wanna get this set up working properly with RAM that's not as expensive as this, but is originally the same price as stuff we used before, links will be in the description down below. We just wanna let people know because they probably saw us building with red RAM and now there's this all blacked out memory from Crucial in here. So uh, just wanna let you all know and we can go ahead and dive into those benchmarks. All right guys, so the first game we are gonna be testing is Apex Legends. Now keep this in mind, we just built a system almost exactly like this one a little while ago and did benchmark similar titles. So if you wanna see that video, Hit the eye in the top right corner to check that video out. But we're gonna go ahead and run through a couple of benchmarks. We do actually benchmark this more extensively in that other video. So if you wanna see that, be sure to check it out. But right now we're gonna run Apex Legends at a mixture of medium to high settings. These are the default settings that it does come with when you launch the game. Right now we're at medium settings, high on like sun shadow coverage and things like that. All right guys, so currently in the jump ship, we are getting about 60 FPS, which is really good for a budget system. Most of the time in the jump ship, most of the time in the jump ship, you actually end up getting like 
pretty low FPS, but since I am the jump master, we are going to go here and just see exactly what happens. So we're gonna drop in real quick. We are still hovering around 60-ish FPS, which is honestly what you'd want to expect from a budget gaming PC nowadays. Um, diving into market, which seems to be a big hot drop right now. We'll see exactly how this pans out for me. Still over 60 FPS, haven't even dipped below that mark. So this is gonna be a very interesting test. Uh, we're gonna land in here real quick and see if we can actually survive and get a gun. And we're well over 100 FPS right now, running around, picking up the Mozambique, feeling very protected. Let's see how this works. Now we're uh, settling into about 80 to 100 to 90. It's really all over the place with VSync off. Um, you can adjust this by, well, enabling VSync if you want a more constant uh, frame rate around 60 to 70, depending where you actually set it to. Oh, the guy's rushing me into the building and frame rate is still holding solid. My teammate just, uh, well, got killed by uh, a team and I go down as well. This was a great example of how I play Apex Legends. All right, guys, so this is the next game we are gonna be testing, which is, of course, PUBG. Now, we're all gonna be testing these two games, which we already did Apex and PUBG, because we, again, have already done this build and we're just using it for a different concept. So, we're just giving you a good idea for those who haven't seen that video, a decent idea of how the system performs and how you're basically getting a really full-fledged gaming PC on a tight budget, and also still being able to fit in that laptop that we mentioned earlier. We are running this on high settings currently, all right, so we're going to hot drop in real quick and see what kind of performance numbers we're getting. Dropping in from the airplane, we're getting about 90 FPS, which is very impressive. This RX 580 is definitely carrying the system. The Ryzen 3 2200G we've noticed from our testing doesn't actually bottleneck higher end graphics cards all that much in games that are very GPU bound. And PUBG is definitely a game that's very GPU bound. It's come a long way since its first release in terms of performance numbers. So as we land in real quick, hopefully we'll have some people come with us. It looks like we do. Um, as we land in, dude, land in. As we land in, we'll see what kind of uh, performance numbers we get once we touch down and start looting. Right now, we are getting around 69, 77-ish FPS hovering around that range. Um, I have a scythe. Let's see exactly how well this works out for me. No guns currently. There is a uh, crossbow, it looks like. This is gonna be perfect for me. But running inside buildings, right, well over 100 FPS, which shows that there is a pretty high ceiling with this graphics card on high settings and PUBG has kind of gotten a little bit better with his optimization in some games, uh, getting 90 to 100 FPS, which is pretty cool. As you can tell, performance in PUBG was pretty solid and I can recommend this PC for pretty much most Battle Royale gaming situations that you'd probably be using this in and also most games in 1080p high settings. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. So as you guys can see, for just a little bit under $550, you now have a laptop which is portable and a computer to actually play your games on. And overall, this is a really good deal because for like $600, you're gonna get a computer with like a 1050, maybe a 1060 max in it and this thing has a card that's better than either one of those cards. The performance on this system is actually very impressive for the money. That RX 580 and Ryzen 3 combo has been a go-to suggestion of ours for a long time. And also this laptop, while it only has four gigs of RAM, you can always upgrade that to eight gigs of RAM if you need to. And it does the job. ThinkPads are really awesome laptops that even on the used market are really easy to get and still have a good life left in them. And they're good for things like office tasks, email, you can watch Netflix, watch YouTube videos like the Toasty Bros live streams and things like that. And all together, this makes a really powerful package. So as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully, we will see you all in the next one. Yeah,